Good evening, everyone. Still alive? I am uh, alive since 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. So, uh, because our subject is uh, positive thinking, I decided to laugh and to enjoy the moment regardless of the adversity of our lives, yes? First of all, I want to say that society is divided. Do you agree with that? The world is divided, society is divided, science is divided, family is divided, church is divided, and we are alone. I don't believe that the circumstances in today's society produces sufficient arguments to live happy in this world. And yet, if there is God, there is sufficient time for us to enjoy his presence in our life. 10%, what is our life? 10% is what happens in our life every day. And 90% is the way that we react to that 10%. Is that true? I, I believe that many, many things are happening in our brain, in our mind, because we do have an uncontrolled mind. God gave us a brain, but you are not the brain. God gave you a brain. Garbage in, garbage out. If you want to be something, it decides what you put in is exactly what gets out. So we format, we produce that uh, hard drive of our brain based on what we are doing with the brain. So 10% is what happens. That's the reality of life. 90% is how we do our bad. Brothers and sisters, friends, my, I believe in God. I'm a pastor. Uh, so I, I, I don't need to portray myself or uh, present myself something else. I believe in Jesus. I am in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my life. I was born in a communist country, Romania, and the people in this country know about Romania three things, Nadia Comaneci, Ceausescu, and Dracula, correct? So I want to tell you that Ceausescu was a good friend with Fidel Castro. Those people who know who Fidel Castro uh, uh, was or is, uh, you have to understand what are the circumstances to live in a communist country. And by the way, we do have a revolution of this nature in our country because we are lacking terms of comparisons. People, our young people, they are called bubble generation. They are born and they never, they want an instant soup. They want everything to be instant, correct? Uh, and uh, when hard times come, we are not ready to cooperate with those hard times. How we get to the point to improve the health and the spiritual and the physical health because they go hand in hand. Everybody believes that all type of disease or most of the disease or sickness starts here. Is that true? So it is very important how we learn to control our, uh, our mind in such a way to be healthy. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. You see, when we talk about positive thinking, this is a secular term. I do have a biblical version of this positive thinking. We discuss the science is divided in two. Why? Because you have scientists who recognize in the science the majestic act of creation uh, produced by God. God is a creator. And these scientists are two centuries ahead of the science. Scientists who refuse to acknowledge God in the science they, they handle and possess. So that's why you have the secular version of positive thinking and you have the biblical version of what positive thinking is. And to leave this place tonight in a good mood, I would like to do everything possible. Merry heart and a broken spirit basically is the same language. God put there the same language referring to how our mind operates in this situation. You see that stress impacts immune system. And we do have a stressed society. We press the acceleration of our families, of our society, our church, everything, politics, uh, history, whatever you want. Any social segment in our society is pushing the limits of human brain. Uh, Yes, we will talk about stress. Stress is induced sometime by a wild mind that is not kept in control. So it is very important to realize that there is a relationship between stress and the way that body reacts and relates with the reality of this life. If you are positive, you postpone your heart attack with six years. If you have hope, then you postpone your heart attack with 10 years. What do you think about that? 
praise the Lord, you know. If our heart and our soul is always dedicated to think that there is a God that is in control of our life and we did not reinvent the, the wheel, then we do have a reason not to be afraid. How do we improve the mental health? This is very important. Positivity and health. And here is a very, very beautiful statement from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where it says, Be not conform conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of ever what, everybody? Renewing of our minds. Science is again behind the Bible. Because this statement has at least 2,000 years, correct? Be not conformed to this world. How would you translate this 2,000 years old statement? Be not conformed to this world. What do you mean? God, what do you want? What, what is the message that you deliver to me? Well, don't drink what the world drinks. Don't talk what the, the way that the world talks. Don't dress the way that the world dresses. Don't eat the way that the world eats. Don't think the way that they think. Don't believe what the world believes. You are unique. Oftentimes, we like to, to hide ourselves in a, um, a to, 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 to be obscure. Nobody sees us. And let me tell you something. When you are afraid to tell others who you are, and you are embarrassed of how, the way that you think, or you are embarrassed that you are Christian, you believe in God, is the very first step when you will deny God. Yeah. We do not have reason to be afraid. We have to speak our mind and not be afraid of what we are. God loves us. And that's why he wants, if we want to preserve our neutrality, the gray area. Yes, we do have that. The gray area. If you want to preserve uh, to be in a gray area, you will lose your uniqueness. We have 7.8 pe billion people in the world, and everyone has a DNA that is unique. Is that true? You, if you like or you don't, you are unique, my friend. And I, I, I have to say, praise the Lord for that. Because God made you to be a diamond, to be a pearl. It's amazing how much love he did invest in you. He has a special garment for you. He has a special crown. He has a, a universal uh, ID card. When you will meet Jesus, he gives you a new name. How much time did God invest to make you happy forever? We do have thousands of reasons, boy, brothers and sisters and friends, to be happy that we do really have a God, a God of mercy. Be not conform with the world. Be unique. If you want to give up your uniqueness, that's fine. But then you will be in the class of the losers. The world does not like to talk about losers. The, lo the world likes to talk about winners. If you want people to talk about you, be a winner. Yeah. By the way, prisons in Romania are not like here with TV, a basketball backyard, a swimming pool, and massage therapy, and all these things. No. Uh, prisons uh, in our country, some of the prisons, not all of them, but the prisons that were maximum security, that were hiding Christians. By the way, we were in prison in Romania because we were Christians, not because we stole $1 from someone else's pocket. You have a small window. To live in darkness, isolation uh, for two weeks. And if you don't have a strong mind or a mind connected with Jesus Christ, you get crazy. I, I saw many people collapsing mentally. Because humanly speaking, we are not designed to survive without having a, a strong supernatural support. Positivity is linked to a greater physical and mental health. And you know that, everybody recognizes that, this is very, very important. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be healthy even as thy soul prospers. So the Bible recognizes the connection between what you feel, what you believe, if you have spiritual inclinations or spiritual orientations. By the way, for many people, religion is feelings and emotions, which is the worst farce you can believe. Religion 
or re religion comes from a Latin term called reelegare, means the relationship or the recovering relation of relationship between God and humans. So when you talk about do you have a religion, in reality you ask people, do you have a connection with divinity? This is what you ask when you ask someone, do you have a religion? In reality, you ask that guy, hey, do you know God? You know? And here, the scripture says that our physical uh, health prospers proportionally with the prosperity of our mind and our heart. Is that beautiful? So when we go a little bit farther, we have um, another statement that I like very much where you see the idea how many people are depressed today in our society how, how many people are depressed in our society how many of you were still here 50 years ago on the, in this world do you remember your grandparents they did they have a bmw or lamborghini or corvette they had a horse the maximum speed of the horse was 16 miles per hour and by the way they were not late guys your grandparents didn't know what stress is. They were working in the field, exposed to sunshine, California, you know? Vitamin D3, no problem. B12, no problem. They will do physical exercise, earn their work, their food with their own hands. Today we have our candy generation. Our kids, they want instant stoop, instant this. Everything must be instant. As soon as you push the new generation out of their comfort zone, they're completely lost. They confuse the Walmart with the cattles. That's the sad reality. I don't know who produced that, how we came to this situation in our beautiful country. I am an adopted son of the United States of America and I take pride of it. Because I know what communism is and I believe that this country deserves respect. It's pity that the people that were born here do not offer the respect that we as immigrants offer to this beautiful, wonderful country. And I say that with, with pain in my heart. This is United States. And used to be in the songs of the, of the Christians, America the Beautiful. How can we think positively? Positive thinking, it's a gift. It's a supernatural behavior. We don't have that. Self-discipline must be carried on by everyone who claims to be the child of God. For it is in this way that the mind and what everybody? The will are brought into subjection to the mind and the will of God. Any ordinary mind will, well disciplined, will accomplish more and higher work than will be the most highly educated mind and the greatest talents without self-control. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you have $3 in your checking account or 1,000 or a million. It doesn't matter if you are nobody in the street, you are an average individual. As long as you are well disciplined, you can produce better work, much quality work than every high tech people in the higher ranks of our society. Is that true? And in, the, in this statement is made at least 125 years ago. Science, again, is behind spirituality and the Bible. Friends, positive thinking is not a mood. Guess what mood am I today? Positive thinking is not a mood. It's not an emotion. Positive thinking, it's a, it's a principle. It's a state of mind. It, it's the way that you operate every day. Like, for instance, I give you an example. First uh, John chapter 8, verse 4. God is love. How many of you heard about that? Simple. God is love. Now I go to the physics. When the Bible says God is love, God is a constant intensity. God is not like this. We are like this. You know, we change moods. That's not positive thinking. And positive thinking is not, a, is, is not an emotion. It's a principle. We have to accustom ourselves. We have to accustom ourselves to often lift the thoughts to God in prayer. If the mind wanders, we must bring it back by persevering 
efforts. How many of you were born in some churches, Christian churches, whatever? How many of you were born in churches? Okay. I was born in a hospital. So how many of you were born in a church? Okay, thank you. So, up to the age of 16, we had little Bibles that will be smuggled through former Yugoslavia, Serbia, Croatia, la la la. And we will get that Bible. We will get that Bible. And I never read the Bible. I never heard about who Jesus is. I was completely illiterate in terms of who God is, whatever. We had just Stalin and communism and propaganda and this, brainwashed. At the age of 16, I was the guy that never kneeled down before any God in my life. And when I got that opportunity, I opened my window. I got a Bible and I learned about the Lord Jesus Christ. For the first time, my father was an activist communist uh, member uh, of the party. My mom the same. They didn't believe in God. They didn't give me an education. Religion did not exist. Only the religion of fear. But when I opened the scripture... And I saw that beautiful message of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ became my hero. And I said, wow, Lord, I want to be like this man. I didn't know who Christ is. I assumed that he's a man that talks to God from heaven. And I said, I want to talk to you. And I had a friend... I had a friend uh, in my uh, a classmate. Uh, we were reading uh, very much uh, uh, this uh, uh, science fiction books. That was our religion in a communist country. And I told my friend, I said, did you bring my book that you promised? Oh, I forgot about that. Hey, bring, come, bring it afternoon when you go to school uh, at home. Bring it afternoon and we will have french fries, three eggs and goat cheese. That was my, my salad in those days. He says, I cannot because my mom had to put me to work in a garden. So now it was springtime and the boy, my classmate, said, man, my mom puts me to work in a garden. In those days, uh, they were practicing uh, spanking, which is attacking the personality of the individual, child molestation, all kind of crazy. We have a lot of words there. <laughs> but my mom gave me spanking for 200 years in advance. And praise the Lord, I'm here, yes? <laughs> I didn't die. So I went back home, I went back home, and after I read the Bible, I read the Bible, I said, I have to pray to this God as this man Jesus prayed. And guess what? I went to pray, two voices in my mind. Are you stupid? Where is God? Where is God? Show me God, show me God. And another voice whispering sweetly, but try it. Just try to talk to God. The Holy Spirit was impressing my mind to talk to the supernatural power, God. The other one didn't like the idea. You know who that is, yes? I went, I opened the window to make sure that God is not deaf and he can hear me. I knelt down and I looked to the blue sky in the spring of March. And I said, God, I don't know if you do really exist, but if you do, I want to ask you an impossible thing. You must bring that classmate with a book, Memories About Future. That was the book, uh, Eric Haring, a German guy. Says, you must bring that boy at home with a book. Not because I was interested in a book, but I want to, pr you, you have to prove me that you do really exist. Probably I engage a few words, a minute, 30 seconds. I have no idea how much I prayed. When you pray from the heart, God is here to listen to you. And I said, bring that man. If you bring that classmate of mine to, to be with me uh, and bring the book, you made a supernatural and I will believe in you and I will follow you all my life. I didn't finish my prayer. And I heard the ring bell. Do, 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 ma. I got so scared. You know, atheists... Look very courageous. Oh, I don't believe in God. But if you have a thunder or lightning beside you, they make 10 signs of the cross uh, per second, you know? That was me. In fact, there is no uh, absolute dedicated atheist. Only people that are less informed about reality of Jesus Christ. 
And that, that, that was me. I went to the door, and here is the boy. Guys, I'm not, I'm not lying to you. I didn't have any religious background. But when that boy ring the door and br gave the book, I asked explanations. Because my mind refuses to, to perceive the supernatural reality. I says, why did you come? You told me that you don't come. Why did you come? Here is the book. He turned back with no explanations and left. I went back in the same place and I kneeled down. I kneeled down and I said, now, from now on, God, I will serve all my life. I don't have a sufficient time to tell you how many, how many years I've seen death before my eyes. And here I am still alive. Why? Because I'm not living for me. I live for the people around. I love you guys. That's why I woke up 2 o'clock in the morning. I lost two, three flights. I was praying in the flight that I will come to see these wonderful friends of mine. You are the best revelation that God has given to me tonight. You are the children of God, okay? So, I did not believe that we can control our minds. In the communist countries, Romania, 1984, 1984, you don't have video play, uh, players, you don't have TVs, rarely. Only those people that will go overseas, they will bring smuggling a video. So uh, when you see a movie from Los Angeles, oh, you thought that you saw the universe. And guess what? Uh, I was a great idiot. Uh, and idiotism has uh, different forms. You know how they are? First level of idiotism is when you watch a movie from the beginning to the end. That's first, and I was that guy. But then you, you progress in that moment of idiotism and you go to the next level. You watch the beginning, the middle of the movie, and the end of the movie. That's the next. But then you go to the third level of idiotism and you watch the beginning and the end of the movie. And then you go to the next level of idiotism and you watch the end of the movie. And then you go to the highest level of idiotism and you don't watch any movie, just ask the title. About the What is the title? Oh, I saw. You saw all the, uni uh, the movies in the universe and that is the highest level of idiotism. I was that guy. I had so much garbage in my mind. And after watching a movie, I tried to control my mind and I could because those scenes will appear and repeat themselves in front of my eyes without my will. That's why to protect our mind and control our thoughts, it's a duty like it's a duty to pray. So it is very, very important, brothers and sisters and friends, to understand this. Three, positive thinking, it's a learning process. Nobody can say, oh, tonight I went to a study, I heard a little bit of uh, that, that funny guy uh, speaking about positive thinking, and now I am, I am well equipped. No, positive thinking, it's a slow process. Disappointments, you try to do the best. How many of you fight against sin? How many of you, how many of us fight against corruption of our mind? And how many of us were defeated every single time we try to fight against those things that we hate? Don't fight sin. Give it away. Abandon sin. Because every time when you try to fight sin, you stay closer to sin. It's not your business to conquer sin. It's your business to connect yourself with Jesus Christ. By contemplation, you will be changed. It's his business to make you a better you, a better person. If you start to fight with Goliath, you will get, and I promise to you, every single time when you get in the ring with Goliath, you will get defeated. You know why? Because you as a man that respects yourself or a woman that respects yourself, you play by the principles. But the devil doesn't play by principles. Every game in sport has rules. The devil doesn't play by the rule. Don't stay close to the sin. Stay close to Jesus and he will change your mind and your character without even paying attention. People will come to say, wow, you are a different person. And you look to yourself and say, who, me? You don't recognize the change that the Lord Jesus did in your life because that is his opera. Positive thinking, it's a gift. Positive thinking, it's, it's something else than changing moods, having parties, screaming, having the, uh, uh, we have those uh, New Year resolutions. Oh, I promise to myself I will not smoke. I promise to myself I will give up vodka. I promise to myself do this. And, and how many months will 
will survive those resolutions. We are lacking willpower. And we will come to this point too. It's a very, very important. How do we understand that? And the Bible is very clear. Guard your loins and your mind says, then control your thoughts. So you cannot get positive thinking without mastering, disciplining the way that you think or the way that I think. And it's very important because the consistency is here. The thoughts may be guarded and controlled by determined efforts. Think right thoughts and you will perform what? Right actions. So the way that we think is the way that we are as character. So when somebody does some silly things or we misbehave, it's not, it's not the body guilty. It's not the mouth guilty. It's because we did not master the beautiful brain God gave to us. Positive thinking requires new thought pattern. It's amazing. I have an author, uh, Ellen G. White, born in 19th century. It's, it's fantastic. She has a statement 124 years ago that proves the science. Have you heard about the neuron neuronal patterns? In the brain, we, we practice a habit, you know, for three weeks, you establish that, especially if it's a good habit, it needs three weeks. If it's a bad, two days, and you got that, yes? Look what this author says, before science may incredibly achieve this conclusion. 124 years ago, a woman with five grades, five grades, made a scientific revolutionary statement. New thoughts, new feelings, new motives are implanted. A new standard of character is set up to life of Christ. The mind is changed. The faculties are aroused to action and new lines. Wow, what is this new lines? This is the neuronal patterns. She didn't know to call that neuronal patterns, but she was revealed and understood that the mind operates by neurons that get friends and friendly and creates that neuronal pattern. That's why the old horse will always go to the old house, yes? Even though you sold the old horse, the old horse will go, why? Because in his brain produced these lines, new lines. Man is not endowed with new faculties, but the faculties he has are sanctified. The conscience is awakened. I was reading the scripture uh, without my father knowing. He was a very aggressive guy. And I was afraid of my dad. I was reading the Bible 2 o'clock in the night, 3 o'clock. He had some prostate problems and he would go to the bathroom oftentimes. And he saw a small light underneath the door that was. And he started to talk to my mom. He says, what's going on with this guy? 2 o'clock in the night, the light is still on. He realized that the former press of friends will not come to visit me. I will not go to the disco bar. My language has changed. No swearing, no cursing, because I did. And my father says, hmm, something strange. I even didn't notice because I don't curse. Sincerely, I didn't, but he did. Something strange happens with this, my boy. And he starts to talk to my mom. And guess what? Every time I will go to school, I will put my Bible, I will hide my Bible in the blanket. And then put the blanket in top and pillows and everything. Try to mask. Guess what? In one morning, he went to do inspection in my bedroom. And he found the Bible. I want to ask you a question. What do you think he did with the Bible? He read no. I wish. He didn't burn it. What? No. He put it back in the same place. He loved to taste the prey. Ah, I'm coming. He's coming home. I will teach him a lesson. I came home. Hi, Dad. How are you? Oh, good, good, good. I went in my bedroom, pulled my Bible, and started to read. I put some books in top because I had a lot of books in the school. And then he comes in the room. What do you do? Oh, uh, uh, I am reading. He says, yeah. He came and pulled the book. He knew exactly that I was reading the Bible. He took the Bible. He slapped me, the, uh, my head with the Bible. Do you see this book? You will never see it again. And he took my Bible away from me. It is so hard 
Because you see, when we talk about positive thinking and connection with the supernatural power of God, there are two ways of communicating. When you pray and you, talk, you tell God, God, I love you. You are my father. Please help me in this situation. I don't know what to do, to the left, to the right. When you pray, you talk to God. When you read the Bible, he talks to you. See, so you need both. If people just simply pray without reading the Bible, they will stop praying. They will cease praying. If you read the Bible without praying, you will become an agnostic. Ah, I read that Bible. A lot of contradictions. Yeah. So we need both prayer and study the word of God. So here is what we have to establish new minds. And this is the way that the mind will be sanctified. Positive thinking, as I said, it's a state of mind. And what is very important is that the mind of the people that will be in the kingdom of God. They gave them what? They gave to God what? The heart and the intellect. Uh, in 1991, I understood that the scientists have discovered neuronitis. I hope that that's the right pronunciation. I'm not a doctor. so. But neuronitis are 40,000 cells have a capacity to memorize. Neurons type like in the brain. And it's interesting that you memorize things in the heart and in the brain at the same time. This is the definition of the Bible, what the positive thinking is. Let this mind be in you. That was in whom? Jesus Christ. Hard times make strong people. Strong people bring good times. Good times produce weak people. Weak people produce bad times. Tell me, our times are good or bad? Bad. Because of what? Because we have weak people that lead the world. People without God, without relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you send your children to Caesar, to Rome, to be educated, when they will come back, they will come back to you Romans. So it's very important what you do with your life. The best standard. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. The highest standard of positive thinking is the standard of Jesus. Because we say, let this mind be in you. Who is the mind of Jesus? The mind of Jesus? Powerful. You know what Matthew 5, 44 says? Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that persecute you. If someone wants to take the jacket away from you, give him the shirt as well. If someone slaps you on the cheek, you have to turn the other. This is the highest degree of positive thinking. This positive thinking Bible version, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. I know brothers, Christians in Romania, that in the time of Christmas, we have 25 of December people celebrate this kind of whatever. And the guardians put them in the sewer of the, of the, of the drainage where all the feces will go out from the prison. They put them there. What do you do? Get depressed? What do you do? They start to sing glory to Jesus. That's positive thinking in our verse, adverse situations. Because we can be positive when everything goes well. Oh, I have sufficient money in an account. I have a vacation once in two years. But positive thinking is preparing people for the great controversy ever was conceived and reported in the history of the world. I'm telling you, Tonight, I tell you, it's a good news for some, bad news for others. Jesus Christ is coming back to curve the suffering, the pain, and misery. If you really want to start the process of positive thinking, recognize him as a better you. If you want to start this process of positive thinking, acknowledge Jesus as the best medication that can heal your wounds. If you, if you really want to have a future, let him to be the king and you to be the preacher. Ecclesiastes 1.12, Solomon, 
He was a tyrant. For 40 years, Jesus knocked to the door of Solomon. Jesus was the preacher. Solomon was the king. And in 1, chapter 1, verse 12, in Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, it's too expensive. I pay a high bill to be the king. I got sick and tired of myself talking like a king, being, walking like a king. And he opened the door to Jesus. You know what that Bible verse says? I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. He says, I was. Why? Now he shifted the positions. He left Jesus in his heart. Jesus became the, became the king. And now Solomon is knocking to the hearts of thousands and millions of people through those three books that he wrote to invite people back to Jesus Christ. Guys, we do have 100% chance to reestablish the secular version of what we call positive thinking by renewing our mind, by allowing Jesus to be the king of our life. I hope that tomorrow night we continue our journey if you are not born and tired. And I thank you so very, very much for being here. Before we uh, uh, give the floor to the host, I want to ask you, do you feel impressed to pray? I'm sincerely, I, I don't know how you do it, but I would like to thank God for you, for your souls. You are such a wonderful bouquet of flowers. And, and if I offend someone by praying, please forgive me. It's just because of love. So let's bow our heads and our hearts and have a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much that you melt our hearts. And you made us to understand the dependence of thy grace and mercy. We recognize ourselves being miserable, blind, poor, selfish. But tonight, we want to invite Jesus in our hearts. We want to lay our head on thy chest to feel a divine heart beating for us. We love you. We miss you. And we pray for all these noble hearts. People who, that are coming from different parts of the world. With their problems, their troubles. Don't let them alone. Elevate their spirit tonight. Let them see the light beyond the tunnel. And help us that going through the valley of shadow of death. They may learn to love Jesus. Which is in fact a better you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. I thank you very much tonight for your patience. And now I give for the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a great topic. We had two nice topics this afternoon, and every day is going to get better and better. So we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 4.30. And we'll have Barbara O'Neill here, my Lord willing. Have a good night, and we'll see you all tomorrow.